as she was taken to the out of the courtroom, Timmy simply stared back in shock, not knowing what to think. Even Cosmo and Wanda were shocked to hear Vicky say such a thing. That was completely unlike Vicky to do such a thing. Timmy was still continued to stare at the same spot where Vicky had been after she had left. Uh, was this supposed to mean anything? Cosmo asked in confusion. It's probably just her way of trying to gain sympathy from Timmy, Wanda guessed. Timmy said nothing as he turned around and followed his parents out of the courtroom. They headed towards the car. Timmy got a glance of Vicky's parents and Tootie, the seat near the car, gazing off of something in the distance. Timmy glanced over and saw a huge black and white prisoner transport bus with a logo on it that read, Dimsdale Penitentiary Transport. Two officers were escorting none other than Vicky onto the bus, where she'd been transported to prison for the rest of her days. Even from the distance, Timmy could see Vicky glancing towards the parking lot at him, and her family emotionless expression on her face as she was loaded onto the bus. Once Vicky was on board, the bus drove off. Timmy then followed his parents to his car and then headed home. Timmy was so happy that Vicky finally getting what she deserved. But one thing that still bothered him, Vicky said to him was that she was sorry and even called him a twerp, like she usually did. Vicky had also spoken in a way that suggested she had even had a little humanity after all. But even if that was the case, Timmy still couldn't forgive her. His parents seemed to notice Timmy looking troubled and wondered what was going on. Timmy, you alright? You don't look too happy, his mother asked. It's Vicky. Timmy answered simply. Right before the cops dragged her to the prison bus, she said that she was sorry and sounded a little serious about it. Miss Turner then scowled upon hearing Vicky's name. I highly doubt she mean it, Timmy. And even if she did, Vicky doesn't deserve any sympathy. Not after what she's done, his mother replied. Your mom's right, Timmy. Vicky was a very evil person, and she's not someone you should forgive so easily, Mr. Turner added. No, don't get me wrong. There's no way I'm never going to forgive her, Timmy corrected. It's just that I can't help but wonder why Vicky would choose to become so cruel. I mean, she did once tell me in that snow cave a long time ago that she had a difficult childhood. But I don't understand what made Vicky so cruel. We may never knew the, the answer, honey, Timmy's mother replied. But like the judge said, some abused people become the abusers over time. And in Vicky's case, that's what happened. Yeah, I mean, Vicky could have chosen a better path to be a better person. But that obviously didn't happen, Timmy replied. Well, it doesn't matter now, Mr. Turner replied. Vicky's never getting out of prison. So we won't have to worry about her anymore. And like we said, son, your mother and I will do the best we can to change our ways. Also, whenever we hire someone to babysit you... We'll be sure to take you more seriously if you have a problem. Eventually, Timmy and his family reached their house and exit the car. Once they got inside, they decided to relax and enjoy some peace and quiet. As for Timmy, he simply headed to his room and closed the door. Once he did, Cosmo and Wanda transformed into their fairy forms again. Timmy simply sat on the bed to relax. Hey Timmy, isn't this amazing? Vicky's finally gone. She got what she deserved. Cosmo said joyfully. Yeah, I guess, Timmy replied with a glum voice. For still some reason, I don't feel happy. I mean, I'm glad Vicky's finally out of my life for good, but I feel empty for some reason. Is it because of the apology Vicky gave you before she was hauled off to prison? Wanda asked curiously. No, it's not that. At least not entirely, Timmy said, then glanced near the bottom of his shirt and gently pressed his hand on the spot where his appendix had been removed. I, I still have flashbacks due to the surgery from a week ago from time to time. And it happens whenever I hear sounds or see things that remind me of it. That's perfectly normal, hun. PTSD isn't something that goes away overnight, Wanda replied. I know, and I think it, it, that's what's bothering me, Timmy said with a sigh. Even though Vicky's gone, I, I still feel as... Though she's actually won. It's just like the judge said. She really messed me up for what she did. Timmy began gently lift his shirt and glance at the surgical wound. Which turned out to be a bad idea. 
because he quickly saw himself back in that surgery room being sliced open. The feeling and the horrible pain from it, Timmy then quickly thrown down his shirt of the gasp of fright and then shook his head. Whoa, you okay there, Timmy? Cosmo asked. Timmy shook his head and felt his tears forming in his eyes. I... I can't... Can't even look at my own wound without remembering, Timmy replied with a sniff. It's so horrible. How am I supposed to go on like this? Timmy, listen to me, hun, Wanda began, flying down to be at his level. Vicky hasn't won. She only wins if she silences you. And you're still alive and breathing, yes. You may have been mentally scarred from the experience, but you could still overcome it. It certainly won't be easy, but like I said... Me and Cosmo will help you as much as we can, and you have so many other people out there who will support you as well. So no, Vicky hasn't won. She may think she has, but she hasn't. Also, please promise us one thing. Yeah, Timmy asked. Promise us that you won't try to take your own life again, Wanda said, almost begging. Timmy nodded and said, I won't, and that's a promise. That's a spirit, kiddo, Cosmo said happily. The two fairies embraced Timmy for the last, for the first time in a while. He felt peace. Even though Timmy knew it would take a long time for him to recover from the mental scars inflicted on him by Vicky. But he knew that his life was, was far more meaningful than he thought. Timmy had his fairy godparents and many others who cared about him so much about him that they would help him through to the end. No matter what came his way, and Vicky with her now in prison for the rest of her life, Timmy's life and so many others' lives would be much more peaceful and would also give other victims time to heal from their mental scars as well. Timmy made a personal note to keep Tootie, however, but he could recover from the horrible abuse inflicted by, on her by Vicky. Even though Timmy was still angry at her, his, at her parents for not taking action, but still understood deep down on why they did it. In time, Timmy hoped for her to come to forgive him, but it wouldn't happen anytime soon. Despite all these times Timmy had faced over the week and a half, he was now ready to move on and look to the future. And of course, he had two fairy godparents to back him up. Timmy was fully prepared at this point to face whatever madness would come his way, and he never would try giving up. I stared at my PC screen as the episode finally ended with the credits rolling. Rather than the usual ending that theme that plays in a Fairy Odd Parents episode, it was sad piano tune that sounded very similar to that of a sad piano theme that plays at the end of Schindler's List. Although clearly not the same theme, fitting I suppose, given the nature of the episode itself. After the credits rolled, I saw that the timestamp and I realized that the episode itself was almost two full hours, making it much longer than any other Fairy Odd Parents episode. I had ever watched before. As for the episode itself and what I thought about it, well my emotions were certainly mixed when it comes to something like this. I was certainly shocked, horrified, eyed, and uh, awed by the whole nature of the episode itself. As I wondered earlier from before during the episode of continuing it, it certainly was very shocking to know that Nickelodeon actually had the balls to make a very odd parents this dark and disturbing. Despite that, however, I will admit the episode certainly did an amazing job portraying the psychological and mental effects that botched surgery could have been on the victim. Hell, I was even almost afraid that Timmy was actually going to die from that one scene where he attempted to take his own life by jumping out of that building. But probably the most satisfying thing I've ever personally enjoyed about the episode, despite the nature themes were added onto it. Seeing Vicky getting her what she deserved. Any Fiery Odd Parents fan would know that whenever Vicky gets called out by Timmy, his parents would just blow it off. Vicky's own parents actually do the same thing to defend her, her evil actions, much to everyone's shock. Not only that, but when Vicky does get caught, something random occurs that focuses Timmy to undo all the fruit. Cosmo and Wanda, and I personally hate it did Vicky since most of the show aired and and I'd always wished that there was some point in the series where she finally gets her karma good without having it undone by Cosmo and Wanda there was no actual moment during the courtroom scene 
that bothered me, though. It was the part where Vicky actually apologized to Timmy. That was certainly a shocking thing to hear Vicky say to Timmy, given how cruel and heartless she is. I couldn't for the life of me figure out why exactly Vicky would apologize to Timmy. I had a few theories as to why she did it, but I probably wouldn't know the answer for sure. It was probably that after hearing everyone of Vicky's victims explaining how much pain, suffering, and mental trauma had afflicted on them, she obviously began to feel regret for the first time in her life. Or was it possible that Vicky simply did it in means to try and get simply get out of punishment? I probably would never know the real answer to that. But for sure, seeing Vicky getting what she deserved permanently was something I never expected to see. Was This episode certainly satisfied for the desire of me, but I knew for a fact that this wasn't the official episode since it was never aired due to the subject matter of the nature fe mature themes. The show's reputation could forever be ruined if it were to happen, and not even mention the extreme amount of backlash both Hartman and Nickelodeon would get from fans and parents like to ever if that were ever to be aired. Also, to avoid possible copyright and backlash myself, I won't be able to upload any footage of the scenes from the episode itself. The screenshot I took was the only exception. I'm still a bit on edge showing that as well. Eventually, I told my friends of what I saw, and I promised to let them see, as long as they swore never to spread it to the public. They agreed and took a look at the episode themselves, and as you can guess, they were shocked and horrified just as me. When they saw the contents of the episode, I couldn't exactly blame them due to how dark it was. Some of them liked it, some of them hated it. For me, well, I don't hate the episode, but I certainly wouldn't watch it on a constant basis due to the dark and gruesome nature. It's been a month since I watched that episode, and I'm still a fan of the Fairly Odd Parents today. However, I still reflect back on that episode and wonder why Nickelodeon even made the episode in the first place, or rather what was the point of making it. Was it possible that this episode was meant to show the viewers the effects of the botched surgery can do to a person's mental state? Or was it just meant for a horror-themed episode? I may never know the answer. No one will, either way. I'm glad I was able to finally tell my story and get it off my chest. It certainly opened my eyes and made me just see how vulnerable human life really is. And that truly matters, right? Wow, that was certainly a long, um, Fairly Odd Parents creepypasta. Well, I know it's two parts, so... Yeah, I mean, they were both long, but, you know, that's something I'm sure some of you or most of you guys enjoy. And that, my little pretties, was um, Fairly Odd Parents Hospital Nightmare, a lost episode creep pasta written by Space Voyager 1701. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, my final thoughts on this story? This is actually a really well-made and decent um, Fairly Odd Parents creepy pasta. I'm not going to deny when I say this. I honestly really like part one. And I was going to originally read part one after I finished narrating it. But I thought I'll do part one and part two. You know, me reviewing the two parts separately. Just so that that way it makes um, more sense. Because I was originally going to do, you know, part one and two in separate reviews. But I thought, you know what? I'll put them together in one review. So... So people can see and understand what my thoughts on. Now, I really do find the concept to be, you know, it's a good and interesting concept. You know, it's not hyperlistic blood or gore or anything. It's pretty, it's pretty well made. Like the fact that, you know, Timmy going through something traumatic experience because of Vicky. And, you know, the fact Vicky sabotaged all of the hospital equipment which led Timmy to be traumatized, having PTSD, resulted in him trying to take his own life. And I mean, holy hell, this went on a roller coaster that led from one to a hundred. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I could see Vicky doing these types of things. Because if you've known Vicky and Fairly Odd Parents, she's pretty much the bully of Timmy Turner. Like, she basically bullies him along with you know, other kids she babysat. Like, if you've seen it in the show, you'll pretty much know where I'm coming from. And I mean, I hated Vicky ever since I was a kid. 
Ever since I watched Fairly Odd Parents, I hated Vicky. I hated Vicky with every ounce of hate I can can you know give because I really hated Vicky in this um you know in this manner basically. I hated Vicky in Fairly Odd Parents. I know it seems harsh, but I mean the acting is good and all, and I like the character design, but the way she you know bullies Timmy and all the other kids. I really did not like the fact that, you know, she did this. But yet again, I mean, she's done this because the show said so. So I'm not going to argue anything like that there. Like, holy hell. I mean, this one was one roller coaster ride. So I have to say, the grammar of this story is well written, as well as the sentence structuring. I know the stories, part one and two, are long. Because these stories took me like two hours, like over two hours to narrate. But I'm not going to complain about that because I don't mind long stories. I have to say, this story honestly was well made in two parts. Like if, if I put them together, it would probably equal like five hour long read of the story. If I were to narrate both parts in one video or something. But if I'm going to be honest... I honestly can see, you know, why Nickelodeon would never air something like this. Because, yeah, not only they'll get backlash and all that, but the episode will most likely get banned, which is no doubt the case. But I would have to say, I'm glad Vicky gets um, what's coming to her, which basically her karma at the end of, you know, the episode itself. But I have to say, there were a couple cliches I do know in this story. Well, maybe one or two cliches that I do know that are in there. But I'm willing to excuse it because it actually flowed out well. The fact that, you know, the protagonist managed to get the episode from Butch Hartman on Discord saying he did not um, make the episode someone else did. So I have a feeling the studio might have been, you know, hijacked or something and that episode appeared. Yet again, I mean... I would have no idea because, you know, Nickelodeon is basically a mystery at this point when it comes to, you know, certain episodes. I mean, there was a couple controversial episodes here and there, but, you know, that's here or there. With all due honesty, I honestly love part one. And part two absolutely went well. Pretty good. I mean, yeah, it was actually really well made. Now... I really do find this story to have really good enjoyable ability, as well as a good concept, the good grammar. I mean, I like the plot of it. I mean, the plot of the episode seems pretty good enough. And I could honestly visualize Vicky doing the things that she did. And I mean, this is no, um, not out of the ordinary for uh, Vicky to do the things that she did. And I could honestly see her doing that. So... Like I'm going to say, this is just simply my own personal opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions regards to these creepypastas. This is just simply my own personal thoughts. My final rating of this story is a... I'm going to give this one a 10 out of 10. Amazing story. Well made. There's definitely a lot of time and effort into it. And I have to say, Space Voyager, this story, flat out amazing. I really enjoyed this story. And... I really hope you guys enjoyed this story too. I mean, if you don't like the story, I respect your opinion. That's just, this is just my opinion, like I'm saying before. Well made, beautiful, pretty good for a Fairly Odd Parents creepypasta. And I can honestly visualize all this happening, and I can honestly see this being a real episode. But yet again, I mean, Nickelodeon and Butch Hartman would most likely get, you know, a lot of backlash for it. So I guess with that being said, what did you guys think about this creepypasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you all not? Did you like part one? Did you like part two? Did you like them both or not? Also, what we have done personally to help make this story a lot better. Feel free to leave me now what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you're new to this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.